Whew. So, wow, man, my hair looks crazy. Hey, what is that? Oh, okay, something in my hair. Okay, sorry about that. Just picking stuff out of my head. <laughs> um, all right, so yesterday I uh, did a saltwater flush and it wasn't, I didn't do a jelly juice flush. Why didn't I do a jelly juice flush? Because I wanted to do the saltwater flush. I wanted to see what the rave was about saltwater flushes prior to the J juice because we know the holistic community has also done saltwater flushes. But why are the, the holistic community who do saltwater flushes, why do they still age, degrade, and pass away? Because they do more than more than what they should. They do it almost all the time. Now, can I substantiate that? No, but I, I, but here's the thing. When someone is aging, they're starving. They're not evolving. They're not, they're, they're not eating all the food in the food supply. They're not, they're not feeling the pain of the viruses. Um, they're not getting their rest. And, uh, and, and so, hey, Pip, hey, everybody. And so, and so the difference between doing a saltwater flush after you have reversed all your issues, and this would be only once a year, after you reversed all your issues and you know exactly how everything feels, you know how your butthole feels, you know how everything feels, you know how to get the poop out without using food or anything else, because you know your muscles, you know your sphincter muscles, you know everything because you are your own doctor. You are your own maintenance person, okay? You can't be afraid of anything. After you've reversed all your issues, then once a year to keep control of your sugars, to keep control of your hormones like insulin, because if you have a lot of, because not saying if you have a lot of sugar, because then people are like, oh, I got to cut out sugar. No, you're supposed to eat, you're supposed to eat sugar, carbs, meat, milk, cheese, eggs, fruits, vegetables to keep up with the level of the environment. And you're supposed to feel every single virus that comes through. What happens is people do saltwater flushes for viruses because they don't want to feel the viruses. <sighs> what happens is people do saltwater flushes to feel, to, to, to take away any pain, okay, that's like internal. And so every single time they feel symptom, their go-to is, or to even poop, their go-to is to do a saltwater flush. Well, guess what? When you do a lot of saltwater flushes on a body that hasn't fully healed, they are taking away substance. Because you saw what I looked like again a couple years ago when I was do when I was mitigating meat and sugar and carbs and only eating like chicken and eggs and fruits and vegetables. I lost a massive amount of weight. I could not get away with that this year or even last year. So thank God I got off the J-juice at some point, ate all food in the food supply and dealt with whatever symptoms that came up. And so then I, re then I realized that yesterday when I did this, what, what made me do the saltwater flush yesterday and not do the jelly juice? Because I felt, I knew when I ate almost a half a gallon of ice cream the other day, okay? And it was my favorite. I told my husband, I, know, I want some ice cream, get me some Rocky Road. And it, got, it was Rocky Road ice cream and I couldn't stop eating it. It was like almost as if something else took over. I just can't. And I felt so below it. Now, what was wrong with that? Well, here's the thing. If I had a programming in my body that allowed me to grow taller than 5'11", if I had another programming in my body, then I, then the potential the body would grow. I can convert my cartilage into bone. I would grow and distribute the extra fat. I mean, I have a, I had a little bit of belly, but after I did a saltwater flush yesterday, I lost some of the little bit of the belly. And so it's, it's definitely, I've, I've lost some pressure, thank God, because I was gaining a lot of pressure. But, but if I would, if I had that, if I had that type of genetic um, predisposition to be taller, then the, the food that I was eating would then cause me to grow taller and then distribute. But you can't like, grow tall that fast because it would be painful, be like having growing pains in your legs. And so where does that extra fat, now you, where does the extra fat go? Where does the extra sugar go? Well, I mean, you, you can go exercise it off. If I, if I was into kinetic activity, I can go exercise it off. Um, but I'm not super mobile right now because I'm writing a book and I'm staying kind of right now in close, under 
lock and key, so to speak, because I don't really wanna go out there. There's too much stuff going on. I gotta write a book and it's cold outside, it's snowy, whatever. And so the, the salt water was the kinetic activity that maybe someone who is eating a lot more could go out there and in a sort of like mobile lifestyle can work it off. Now, if I wasn't writing a book and doing other stuff, I would be super like taking care of my house and getting everything like completely perfect, like getting rid of all the clutter and, and painting and doing other stuff. But right now I'm trying to get this book done. So I'm more sedentary than not. So where, where does the fat go? Where does the sugar go? It kind of just stays on you. And so then, okay. So relative to your lifestyle and belief systems, okay, and you keep in the balance, doing an annual saltwater flush then balances out your sugars. It balances out your insulin so you don't produce so much insulin to control your sugar. That's why people are diabetic because <clears throat> they're on low sodium diets. Yeah, they might be active. Yeah, they might be, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, mobile or whatever, but they don't have the sodium flushes, not a high sodium diet because a high sodium diet is the salting in. That's what I finally figured out because I was, my husband, he's, he has a, he's a higher sodium diet. Yes. Um, he, you know, he's not a small man. He's a big man, but not super fat. He's about average for the guy, his, his age, but he's like, he has a dad bod. Dad bods have the belly. Well, wh wh why do they have the belly fat? Because they are gathering so much of the fat that even though they poop every day, the fat and all the, the different proteins that that are blooming because they're not being released. So they're they're blooming. They're, you know, I'm not saying it's infection, but they're blooming. And so they're it, it creates pressure and pressure creates volume. It creates it 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 expands. Pressure expands, expands the cells, expands the belly. And so that's why you see people with more bellies than other because they have a lot of expansion going on in their cells, in their gut, and they're on low sodium diets. And so, so then I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it now. So that's, so that's, so that's why people are, 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 are diabetic. And then when they're insulin resistant, when they're finally resistant to insulin, because there's so much sugar in the body, not enough salt, then, then this is why the body then goes into sugar shock and everything else. And then they have to go get insulin and inject insulin and, 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 and you know, and take insulin pills or whatever, take hormones. Or they mitigate sugar. They mitigate carbs. They mitigate all the different things and they start starving themselves. They go on intermittent fasting. They stay away from foods. That's the whole diet industry is because they have kept people away from salt. So you see exactly the foundation of all disease. I don't care what do you call it. All disease and the aging process and the death process is the fact that people have not used, thank you, use uh, salt in the manner that it was supposed to. So you salt in with a high sodium diet, but once a year when you finally reverse all your issues because you know everyone's at a deficit and you feel all the viruses, like I did yesterday, I knew I have a bit of a belly. Uh, I know I'm carrying a little extra weight, but I'm fine with it. it isn't, I told my husband, it's intelligence. If I were to get down to what I was a couple years ago, I would lose intelligence, literally and figuratively, I would lose intelligence. When you have so much weight on you, that's too much intelligence and you overheat. That's too much data. So people who are who are very obese, well, they overheat. They're hot as far as temperature wise. And yes, there, there's a lot of pressure going on on their vital organs. So people who are obese don't have a long lifespan just because the amount of pressure they are putting on their vital organs. And yeah, a lot of people are, who are obese are very smart. But it'll be short-lived if they don't balance out their microbiome, okay? And so, and so yeah, so yesterday, so so I told my husband, okay, you know, I, I, I well, I don't know what I told my husband, yeah, that I, that I don't want to lose intelligence. But yeah, so yesterday, or uh, where was I going with that? Yeah, so once a year, once a year, when you salt in and you, and you gain pressure and you gain intelligence, salting in, eating all food in the food supply, you feel all the viruses. And then once a year, just like, I guess it's like, I mean, if I were to make up the name of the, the, of the ritual that the, the South Africans did when they, when they traveled to the sea once a year to go salt out, 
like the African salting out ritual type of thing because I still remember what that lady said. I don't, I'm not going to say her name because she's off my Facebook and she was following me for a couple years and then we parted ways, obviously. <laughs> we parted ways with a lot of people. I parted ways with a lot of people, but whatever. But she was saying that, yeah, in her, in the culture of South Africa, the, the indigenous tribes once a year made their way to the ocean and drank ocean water to release anything excess and allow them to align, allow them to align themselves to the new viruses. So when you think about like Vietnam, Vietnam was taken over by the French and the French, you know, French music, fr French music, French food, the French people, beautiful, beautiful people, Vietnamese people, beautiful people. Okay. And so you think about being taken over by, by, by the French. Well, we don't want to have any virus take us over. I mean, that's what a uh, vital information resource slash recourse under siege means is that you have a main viral operating system that some other virus that everyone's afraid of potentially could take over, yes, but it's not supposed to take over. It's supposed to enhance who you are, not take over. The French enhanced the Vietnamese culture. At one point, they did occupy, okay? At one point, they did occupy, but eventually the Vietnamese kicked out the French, but there's still residual influence of the French. And now the Vietnamese culture is enhanced. It's it's still beautiful. And the women are beautiful. The, everything is beautiful. And, and even, you know, and, and I'm sure France has a bunch of Vietnamese people somewhere in their region. And so there's a nice, you know, mixture of, 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 of a melting pot of cultures and people and ideas. And that's how you have to look at viruses. So once a year... After you've gone through, like every year, you're gonna you're gonna be inundated, just like every flu season, you're gonna be inundated by flu viruses. And now with all of this this COVID stuff, and then anything else under the the sun that's gonna be coming through, every year you're gonna be inundated. But some of you are still at a deficit. Some of you aren't. I don't. You know, you will have to figure out. No, I can't tell you. But I know some of you haven't even reversed all your issues because you're still dealing with them. It's not hasn't gone yet. And you still have to deal with breakthrough infection and all that stuff. And so I was lucky I came into the JJ protocol as a type O and not as many predispositions as some of you. I came into this, you know, in my late 30s or no, late 40s, no, early 40s. Hell, I don't know how old I am. I'm 48. So, you know, it was five years ago. I was 40 something, 43, 44, whatever. Okay, so I wasn't, I, I, I was still in my mid 40s. I wasn't like 50 or 60 or 70 where I had a lot more time behind me to, to, uh, to be at a deficit. The more, the older you are in this society, especially if you're, you've been vegan, vegetarian, and all this stuff and doing all the different drugs and whatever, the older you are in this society, the more out of deficit you are, the harder it's going to be, not impossible, the harder it's going to be and the longer it's going to take for you to get everything back up to status quo. You reverse the aging process, bring in collagen, gain some weight, deal with the viruses, and then uh, and, you know, you journal in your in your notebook and eventually I will have an app where you can do a digital journal and watch your progress and make notes because I'll tell you, uh, yesterday I slept all day. What, after I did, when I did the, the, the saltwater flush, I, I came back to my, to my desk after I did it. I just took a coffee cup, put some salt in it and mixed it. And it was really strong. And I just shot it. And I, I don't feel like smelling my juice because that can turn somebody off, whatever. But the juice has the probiotics and has, a, has the, the, the cabbage, but the salt water was just like, okay, I, I have the fermentation in my body. I can go drink milk and, and, and it'll ferment and give me the lactobacillus. So I'm not worried about not getting probiotics. I make my own probiotics, okay? So so anyways, so I did that and I felt the gurgling. I could feel the energy in my in my gut. I'm just like, oh, I feel the energy. Okay, great. I didn't think I was going to get any waterfalls. Let me tell you, I didn't think I was going to get any waterfalls. And so then I'm like, oh, shit, I felt something. And I haven't done waterfalls in a while. So it's it's been a while. So it kind of brought me back to what it was like a couple years ago. And I went up to the stairs and I, and I pooped out some stuff. Okay, I'm like, okay, great. I drank some more water, whatever. I mean, I water backed it a few times. And then all of a sudden, it all came out. And yeah, it all came out. And it was just, it was like, it was a force like you would not believe. And so, and it was sludgy. It was gross, but it wasn't bad. It was just all brown and it had a few chunks in it. I mean, let me just give you some details here. 
but it was like, but that was, that was like soup in my gut. That was what was building up pressure. That was what was expanding my gut a little bit. And so that if you, if you don't like, uh, release that excess stuff, it does build up. It does build up pressure and it, it'll cause then you to eat more and do other stuff and it'll cause your hormones to go all catty. And so what caused me to do it yesterday, because I felt something weird after I ate the ice cream, I felt something weird the next day, which was yesterday. And so something told me to go do a, a shot of, of, um, of salt water. Now it's interesting this last couple of days when I was doing the, the research on virus, the acronym for virus, vital information recourse under recourse or resource. See, when I Googled like virus, like what is a virus? Like you, you see biologically what a virus is, the definitions, and you see what the computer world has deemed what a virus is. But I never knew that the virus actually had an acronym. But somehow, when I Googled virus yet again, like for the millionth time, I've, I've Googled virus for the for millions of times, right? Something said it's vital information recourse under siege. And so I went with that. And then I was thinking like recourse. What do you mean recourse? I know what vital, I know what information is, right? But recourse? What do you mean by recourse? I mean, recourse is where you are re recouping lost resources. And I'm like, what the hell? I mean, how is how is something vital information recourse recouping loss? And so that is then I then I then I started making like okay, I started developing a thought process around that. I'm like, oh, it's 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 it is uh, adaptation. It is when you lose something like uh, converting your body from one virus into another. It's like entropy; it loses it loses energy, right? And then you have to keep keep feeding it. So that's entropy. So I'm like, okay, so viruses that that are vital information recourse, vital information that's recouping lost resources under siege. Okay, well, okay, it's under siege. Well, okay, I get it. It's now trying to protect itself and and recoup resources while it's under siege. Okay, got it. That's fine. Uh, and then I went back and looked for it again because I, I was writing about it and I said, this is what, this is what virus means, but I didn't substantiate it. I didn't add a link to it or anything. So I then went back and looked for what I was, what I, what I found before. I couldn't find it. I could not find that link. And I'm like vital information recourse under siege, Google, Google. I can't find it. And then I see something like from topper, which is like some blog site and it showed that, but it showed it as an answer that was wrong in a question if someone wanted to was doing a, some kind of self test on what viruses were, because there was like five different answers. And one of them was wrong was the vital information recourse under siege. But the right one was vital information resource under siege. <laughs> well, they're both kind of the same thing. There's both resources. Re, re, recourse is you have some kind of uh, workaround to recoup lost energy or lost resources. But still, but it's still, I guess it's a diminishing of a resource because you're recouping something that was lost. But they're still very similar, not exactly the same, but very similar. And so then I'm like, well, what the hell told me to go into and take off with, with with this acronym of recourse? And I couldn't for the life of me. I'm thinking like I kept putting in vital information recourse and it wouldn't come up. It only put in vital information recourse. So it's interesting even now. And I, and now it could be the algorithms that when you no, it couldn't be because I was putting what, what does virus stand for? I didn't even, I didn't even know what the, what the actual word meant. I mean, I knew what it meant, but I didn't know what the acronym was. So when I said, what is, what is virus? And that's what showed up was vital information recourse under siege. And I saw that, but I didn't ever saw it again as a leading headline. And so I know that there's some sh crazy things, stuff going on in the, in the universe, in 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 my microbiome, the energy fields that we all are experiencing based upon our access to the universe. I know a lot of things that I've had weird things that I'm just like, what the hell? What, what made me think of this? What maybe you know, so at some point, at some point, when you finally get in tune with not only yourself but with the universe, something is gonna help guide you to make the right decisions in your personal world. Okay? So that's the the magic of the JJ mentality is when you finally feel all the viruses and you face all the pain and you're honest with yourself and and if you can be honest with your community and risk being ridiculed and people looking at you crazy, you will tap into a whole other part of the universe that you probably never even thought it was even existing because 
I never did psychedelic. I think I, I did. The one time I did acid a long time ago, back in 96 and, nine, and 94, 93. That was my only psychedelic experience. I never done the ayahuasca, whatever. I've never done the mushrooms. I've never done any of the, 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 the whatever, LSD. I would not do any of that stuff, okay? So I have no idea what it's like to tap into another realm. And I don't want to purposely bring that on. I want that tapping into another realm, a, like a relative psychedelic experience, whether it's in my dreams or something that I am working with and dealing with and trying to to find a solution for, for a complex problem. I want it to be an earned thing that it comes to me when I need it. Not that I'm trying to search for it. And that's why it's so important to get off the drugs because any other drugs out there, whatever they are, psychedelic or otherwise, does alter your, well, obviously also your reality, but it, it, it'll, it'll hinder any possibility for you actually getting guided correctly by the universe, okay? And so that's why salt probably has been scared away from us because it is a resource that does tap, right? You know, it, it obviously decalcifies the pineal gland and it allows you to, to, to tap into your ancestors, whoever they are. And so then you have a wider, a wider expanded um, view of not only yourself, but of the world around you. And then you see things for what they are. And you're not as triggered and or as emotional. And, and you're not trying to ram you know, anything down anyone's throat. It, it, it's, the world is full of different perspectives and, but you have to know that there's other op options and w what is the foundation of all cancer disease and chronic illness? Yeah. It's the low sodium diets and then all the remedies and people wanting to be in a cured state, not wanting to feel pain, don't want to feel any of their idiosyncrasies and are kind of stuck looping in the same ideas, thought processes and they have an image to protect. And that's the thing with JJ. You don't have an image to protect with JJ because life is about learning. There is absolutely no way you can know even <laughs> like like the like even 50% of the world's knowledge in less than 100 years. You may know you may be very good at your job. Okay, big fucking deal. Someone can take me from ground zero, train me and groom me for a very narrow purpose. And I'm doing it every single day. Yeah, you know, people get accolades and out there and get to get their degrees and then get all their, their reward, awards and stuff and get honored by this person, that person for this, this and this. But I mean, when you think about the vast amount of knowledge and awareness that is available to somebody who who can keep living indefinitely, it's way longer than 100 years. And the, it's, it, the possibilities are endless. And so I would just say, do not limit yourself to your small family or your large family. Do not limit yourself to your commune. Do not limit yourself to just watching one thing on TV. Don't limit yourself at all. Have a discerning way of watching things. Like I watched the rest of that uh, Flat Earth Lost History, whatever. I'm not a flat earther per se. I'm willing to consider all possibilities. I cannot say for sure one is no, one is yes, one is yes. But I'd need to abide by certain rules so the the so everything connects. Now, if they decide to say that the earth isn't isn't round and it's flat, I'm sure we could still modify physics or modify some of the rules. But they would, they would still be very similar, but, you know, slight modifications isn't going to hurt anybody. And so, and so, you know, it just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking like, just I, the, just the amount of, of knowledge that, that I'm obtaining, it's, it's pretty crazy. And so, but don't limit yourself. Just don't limit yourself with, 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 with same thought processes. Okay, just don't limit yourself, but have discernment. And obviously, be careful who you hang out with. Okay, because it's very easy to get caught up. I mean, you can be exposed. People can enhance you, but you don't want them to take over. And that's the main thing you have to understand is that you want people to enhance you. 
But if their personality is just as strong as yours and they have an opposite point of view, you don't want to mix those two worlds together because it will be a fight to the death and you don't want that. You want people around you to enhance you, not try to convert you. And I have to be the same way. I mean, I'm a, very, I'm a huge converter. I'm a, a major converter. So I have to watch who it is I hang out with because when I see something that needs to be converted, in my opinion... I, it's hard for me not to go and say something. So then I have to also watch what I say and do and who I hang out with because it's very easy to try to pick somebody up who's fallen, who doesn't want to be picked up. <laughs> okay. And they don't think themselves as fallen. So <laughs> then you just have to be okay. And so that's the thing. So surround yourself with people who want to be enhanced and who are enhancing you and then, and be the example. And don't limit yourself as far as information. Again, like I said, I watched the rest of that flat earth. That's where I was going. Flat earth thing. And I mean, it's, yeah, it's, wow. It's it's like, holy crap. But at this point, we're just, we keep moving forward in, in time. And we can look back and be like, yeah, there's probably a billion perspectives that are correct. And the main one that we know about right now is the mainstream given off by institutions, academia, the government. So be it. They have to have some kind of order out of chaos. I wouldn't say they lied to it. Maybe they did. But when you have 7 billion people and you have 7 billion perspectives, how the hell are you going to get any kind of advancement when everyone is chaotically believing something different and don't want to follow a type of pattern or routine? So you have to get people edified up to a certain level, give them a platform to work from, and then guide their their directions where they go in a, in a careful way, give them enough freedom to, to think without misinforming themselves or the population. And that's a hard thing to do. So that's why there's censorship. So all of you who are like, oh God, they're censoring us. Well, when you think about it, if you were to be allowed to, to, to go and tout your antibiotics, if you were still in the antibiotic world and you were touting your antibiotics and they were killing people and you weren't giving them the other side of the dark side of the antibiotics and you're only giving them the light side of the antibiotics, that's what they have to censor. So you have to understand why censorship happens because people will take things to such an extreme and they get everyone to join on the bandwagon and all of a sudden, now, instead of a progressive decline, it's a straight up 90 degree. People are jumping off the freaking cliff. Okay. And you don't want that. And the government doesn't want that. So they have to go and temper the extremists out there. And there are a lot of extremists out there. And so even the religious world has shown who the extremists are in my world. Okay. So just understand why, why things exist, why, why we have everything we have Consider all Everything is relevant as a possibility and a consideration. It doesn't mean you have to adopt it. And you exemplify everything that you believe in. You exemplify. All right. You guys have a good day. Thanks for listening. Nice to see your faces. Bye.